Truth Be Told is a six-part documentary series critically examining the legacy of South Africa's truth and reconciliation process. The powerful reality program explores the impact of apartheid-era atrocities on individuals and families who suffered, as well as how the lack of prosecutions continues to affect the country today. The series uncovers the trauma and the grief that still haunt those who survived or were left behind. To tell us more, we join virtually by the producer and director of Truth Be Told documentary, Anva Samuel. Anva, a very good morning. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Good morning and uh, thank you for having me, Sipiwe. First of all, what motivated you to make and create a documentary series, Truth Be Told? I think one of the main uh, motivating factors for me to make this documentary series was um, the past documentaries that I've made on people like uh, Dalsi September and Ahmad Timo, who um, were part of the you know, the, the, the struggle, liberation struggle to get us our democracy that we enjoy today, mm. but a very sort of unsung heroes and heroines. You know, we, we, we tend to know the big names, um, Nelson Mandela, Oliver Tambo, Walter Susulu, and, and, and names like that. But um, the lesser known unsung heroes and heroines have seemed to have been forgotten by, by, by history. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it, as we enjoy 30 years of democracy, it's a good time to honor these type of heroes and heroines that names are not really in the forefront um, of South Africa's um, dialogue. Yeah. You know, Anva, it's, it's often said that the first step towards solving a particular issue is when you talk about it, is, is when you discuss it. But then some people feel that uh, the more they talk about uh, something that uh, was traumatizing or something, uh, you know, something so bad in their history, the more wounds it opens. So did you at all face any resistance from the families or individuals involved in the cases that you, you documented? No, without, without a doubt, all six families that took part were very eager to share their story um, on a public platform. So they almost found it, which was a common denominator in, in the six stories, they almost found it a, like a cathartic experience. It was almost like they um, wanted to get something off their shoulders. And, okay. you know, I would, I would get responses like, um, you know, after lengthy interviews, and things like that, you know, like the next day when we carried on with the shoot, um, like I haven't slept like this in, in, in 25 years. And, and, and then some of the families hadn't really talked about it, like, like an aunt hadn't talked to the son, uh, to her, her, her nephew. Yeah. About his, uh, her sister, how she was killed, you know. So, so for a lot of them, I think the, 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 the simple fact of entering into a dialogue at a, at a sort of extended level was, was very helpful for them. Did you learn anything surprising or uh, maybe unexpected during the making of the series? Um, I think the surprising thing is that how, how many families have not really healed and how many families have not really talked about the trauma and how many of the families should have some sort of you know, at a sophisticated level, they should have uh, counselling. And the unfortunate thing was that this was not, not done after the TRC. There were, there were a lot of recommendations made after the TRC, but there was not a lot of follow-up. And, and, and I think um, this, this whole aspect of transgenerational trauma, um, uh, as South Africans, we need to take a hard look at it. And, and, and victims and families of um, apartheid gross human rights violations definitely need to have a, a, a very well formulated uh, plan to, um, to, to have these issues addressed. Um, because it's quite, a, a, it's quite a visible thing to see this, uh, the, you know, how it has affected the families. Even though, you know, it's sometimes it's three decades, four decades ago, but it's almost something that sits on their shoulders. It's, a, it's actually, it's a visible thing that you can see. And, and I think, um, you know, you, you, can't, uh, you can't forget the past, um, but like, like, a, like, a, like waving a magic wand. Mm. 
mm. if, if you haven't addressed um, those serious issues. You know, you've just alluded to a very important component or element of every reconciliation process, that there's no follow-up model. And having said that, do you think the series will have an impact on just how South Africans think about the truth and reconciliation process? I think so. We had a, we had a launch for the series at the Nelson Mandela Foundation run in conjunction with the Foundation for Human Rights. And there were over 200 people there. And, and, and what I really liked about the whole process was that um you know it wasn't a bunch of like old veterans that were there um mm. it was a young crowd very young crowd and they were very engaged with the whole process and and and, and i saw by the question that they asked in the q a that there's a serious interest about the past um and and it's encouraging one of the things in the series is that the child is telling the story of Pilar Porsche and Guandre, for example. Yeah. Um, so, so that child today is, is between 30 and 40 years old, and they, you know, are, are this are this new generation that we have uh, a lot of hope for. So, so, so that's that's the the I think the magic of the series that it's not just a historical look at at six people, but through the eyes of the child, it becomes a very present story, and and I think as we as I say, we enjoy 30 years of democracy now and you get the opportunity to vote pretty soon that that you should look at the people like the six and what they've done for the country and, and, yep. and never forget the responsibility of, of how important your vote is because they, they died, they, they, they pay for this freedom of their lives. Yeah, and do you think uh, it is important for a country to come to terms with its past in order to move forward, or is it better to focus on the future rather than the past? I think it's incredibly important to, to recognize the past and what we've been through. Okay. I think a lot of people go, you know, when, when, when they see the documentary, a lot of the, the new generation will look at it and say, but is, did this really happen? And it did happen. There were orders to eliminate people. There were orders to, um, you know, uh, you know, take out people. There were there were hit squads. So, 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 those things need to be remembered. And 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 I think um, it's incredibly important for us to to pay tribute to people like um, Ntombi Kubeka, Topsy Madaka, Matthews Mabalani. Um, and, and, and names like that, you might ask, me, who are these names? But but when you watch the series, you'll you, you'll just you'll discover that maybe I should know about these people. Mm, mm. All right, Anva, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time. We certainly hope that uh, this series will answer questions whether it is possible to achieve genuine reconciliation. Thank you so much for chatting to us. Can I just say that the, the series is on Monday nights on SABC three at nine pm. Okay, thank you so much for that reminder. We do appreciate the time. Great stuff. That was award-winning documentary filmmaker Anvar Semmel, producer and director of the series titled Truth Be Told, which aims at unpacking the impact of the apartheid era's gross human rights violations, which extend beyond each single criminal incident and continues to affect South Africans individually and collectively.